Hey guys, I'm Jade from JD Babies and today I'm going to show you how to make a slip on boot. Just a quick couple things. Um, you can use upcycled materials for this project so that you don't have to invest in anything. I used an old sweater and then I used the ri ribbing from the sweater on the front. But you can use whatever pieces of the material you want. You just want to make sure that it's a knit and that it doesn't fray. So I used an old upcycled sweater. You could use an old leather purse or an old leather bag as the sole and you don't have to buy anything to make it and you can get a free pdf pattern to try it out on my website which is pb-j.ca um on my business i use ultra suede on my toe and my heel so you can also use a leather for that as well or if you have another durable material like denim or whatever you have um if you are using denim you're going to want to zigzag stitch it on but because my ultra suede doesn't Ray. I just did a straight stitch on there so you can see that and then I use a bonded material which just adds a little bit more want warmth and I have Sherpa on the inside. So I'm going to hop on over to the sewing machine and show you how to make it and make sure you like and subscribe if you liked this video to see more freebies from me. I'll see you over there. So here's our slip on boot. You can see it's made with a bonded material. Um, so it's a knit bonded with Sherpa and then we have our ultra suede on our toe and heel and then we have a tough textile. So I'm going to jump right in and show you how to make them. Um, so the first step that we're going to do is we are going to sew our ultra suede to our toe. So I am going to clip it in place. I want it right at the edge of the material. And once I have it in place, I'm just going to sew it down. And when I sew it down, I'm just using the middle of my um, foot here as my guide because it's a little difficult to use this side. So I'm going to back stitch and go all the way along. And back stitch here as well. off so we have that piece there and then we have our shin piece and what where it goes is it's right between these two little notches here so you can see one notch there and one notch there and I'm gonna have my seams on the outside of this boot so I want to put the wrong sides together if you want your seams on the inside you would put the right sides together so I am just lining it up in between those notches and now I'm using the outside of my foot as my um, seam allowance. So you can use a quarter inch seam allowance as an alternative, but I like to use the edge of my foot because I find it's a little bit more consistent. It's really not far off of one quarter inch seam allowance. So you want to backstitch at both ends there and trim your threads as you go. So after I put that piece on, I just fold it in half to make sure that it is right in the center. If it's not in the center, um, your shoe is going to be twisted, so you don't want a twisted shoe. So I'm just lining it up to make sure that it is the exact same on either side. So now that I have that, I can put my suede on my heel. Um, so this material does have a pile. My pile is running up this way, and I want the pile to run towards the top of the boot because it makes it look fuller. So this is my bottom down here, and I'm going to put my suede on there. So I'm just going to lay it in place and clip it. And I'm going to sew it along the bottom. And that will be important when you're doing the heel so that you don't actually miss the suede when you're putting on the heel because it is pretty easy to miss. step I am going to put my um, label on so to put my label on I just crease it in the center and put my label right in the center and then I clip that as well 
And once I have it in the center, I have my logo or my website at the top so I know where the center is. And then I can sew it down. pattern piece here and I'm just gonna clip it where the the lines showing you where the elastic are supposed to go so I'm just putting two clips on either side there and once I have my clips in place I'm gonna lay a one inch piece of fleece along the top it's a little bit longer than the boot and we will trim off the excess after so I'm just going to backstitch and sew all the way along. And this flappy piece of fleece will hold my elastic in without letting it touch their skin. If you want, you can also zigzag the elastic onto the back side of the material, but that does touch their ankle, so I like to encase it. So now I have this piece of fleece here, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a one quarter inch flat braided elastic in between. I'm just going to trim off these so I can see what I'm doing. Match them right up to the boot. Okay, and then I'm just going to fold it over and I'm going to sew it down. So I can see my, the edge of my fabric here so I want to make sure that the my foot is on the edge of that fabric so that I don't miss it on the back side. And back stitch. So now I want to make sure my elastic is flat and pushed up towards the top so that I don't miss it. And I'm just going to run along the bottom of the fleece. And when I get to the other end, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this until the boot uh, curls around. So you can see it's curling and I want it to curl right around so it's touching itself there. And once I have it doing that, I'm going to back stitch it down. And that gives it just the perfect amount of elastic uh, to hold them on. So it's not too tight, but also not loose. Okay, so we have that there. I do suggest using a piece of fleece that matches your liner, but I'm using dark so that you can see what I'm doing. So you can see my elastic is encased there. And now we're going to add our toe piece to it. So again, my seams are on the outside, so I am sewing from the top of the boot. Okay, so I'm going to sew from the bottom here all the way up, and then the bottom will line up together. This seam in the middle here lines up with your elastic, and then this lines up with the top. So if you want to, you can clip those together. And I'm going to sew those together now. And I'm just shoving my little fluffies inside so that I can see what I'm doing because they kind of get in the way of being able to see where you're sewing. And I want to make sure I don't miss this bottom layer here. If you miss the bottom layer, you're going to have a hole and you don't want any holes. I'm just going to remove that last clip. I'm going to line these up and sew it down. So now I'm going to start from the top of my boot. And the reason I do that is because this little um, intersection here is easy to miss if you sew it from the back side. So if I was to sew it from the back side, I'm likely going to miss this intersection here and you don't want to miss that. So now I'm going to start from the top of the boot. Again, you can clip the intersections if you like, the top, the bottom, and the middle. But I'm just going to fly through this step, back stitch, shove your fluffies in. The seam is right at my elastic. So 
So this is why you should uh, use the e fleece that matches. You can, you'll be able to see it. And I'm going to back stitch at the bottom. And this boot is ready for soles. Make sure you clip all the threads off because it is like hair and it can wrap around the baby still. So you can see those ugly little fleece lines there. So make sure you're using the same color fleece as your liner. So this boot is ready for soles. So here's my tough tech sole. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the boot inside out and I'm going to put two clips on either side of my boot right on top of that seam. So that seam on the side gives us a marker. So what I want to do is I want those seams to be parallel with each other. So I want them right across from each other and I want to make sure that I have enough material at my toe and enough material at my heel. So once I have it in the right spot, I am going to clip it down. And clip. Okay, so I'm going to flip it over. You can see that my seams are not parallel. This one's a little bit higher than this one, so I'm going to want to fix that. So I'm just going to line up my toe here and see where I need more material. So I need more material at my heel, so I'm going to move this clip back just slightly. And then once I have it in the right spot, I'm going to flip it over again and make sure that these are right across from each other. So now we can start sewing. I think I need to move it just slightly forward. Okay. So I always start from the same side. It gives you a really good um, consistency to stay, start from the same side every single time. So it's just way easier to manage. So I am just gonna sew around. You can see that my I have my suede here. You can also clip the suede so that they are parallel as well. But I'm just gonna start sewing and I'm lining up the edge of my material with the edge of my Tough Tech. And I'm gonna start sewing. And I'm just replacing the fabric as I go around. And now I'm just going to make sure that these seams here are in line with each other still. So I got one here and one here, and they look like they're just about parallel, so I'm going to sew it down. And once I get to that spot, I am going to fan out my suede here so that there's no puck, uh, puckers or bunches. And I'm just going to fan it out, and I'm going to grab all this material into the center as a handle. Once I have everything worked out, there's no bunches or puckers, I'm going to just sew around the heel. Again, I'm using the edge of my foot. So now that we have our sole on, you can check to see if you made any errors around here. If you did, you can just go over them um, from the bottom side of the tough tech, but I am going to go ahead and trim this off. So what we want to do is we're just trimming it enough so that we can see our cotton, or in this case our knit, um, and we want a little bit of that exposed so that we can tack down our, or sew down our faux fur without having any tough tech exposed to rub against the edge of a toe. So um, it's just a lot softer on the inside if the edge of your feet are touching faux fur opposed to the tough tech. So I'm just exposing a little bit of the material all the way around. And once I do that, I can put my fur on. So my fur doesn't have a pile, it's running this way. And I'm just going to put it on so that it's running towards the toe. So I'm going to sew that on. And I'm sewing right in between the edge of my fabric and my original seam that held down my tough tech. So I'm sewing quite close to the edge, but not, um, not too far in because I don't want to run over my 
my original stitching because then the tuft tech is going to be exposed. So we're running right in between the edge of the fabric and our original stitching. And then around the heel, I'm going to go over top of my original stitching. And this pulls the heel off the ground. Once we have our fur on, we can just quickly trim it off. And I'm just trimming it right to the edge of my fabric. And you want to make sure that you're not cutting into your stitching because it's so close. So you want to make sure that your scissors are not twisted like this as you're cutting because you will cut your stitching. So make sure your scissors are straight up and down as you're cutting this off. And then you can go to the other side and you can just trim up any thick areas or give it a little haircut to make it a little bit neater. So here there's a bit of a thick spot so I can trim that off. And that just reduces bulk around the sole. If you have too much bulk, your seams will be really lumpy. So this is the way that I do it to get nice smooth seams around my sole. So I'm just going to flip it right side out. Now I'm just going to use my fingers to press out all the seams around the sole. So there you have it. That is my slip-on boot. You can pick up the free pa uh, PDF pattern on my website, pb-j.ca, and you can try this pattern out before buying the full pattern. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe.